Hi, I'm Ryan Stevenson. I'm the head chef at the Calibert Chocolate Academy here in Belgium. This is Ruby RB1, Calibert's first Ruby chocolate for artisans and for chefs. It truly has a really unique taste, intense fruitiness and fresh sour notes. And with its colour, it's really going to stand out in your counter and every dish, a real wow factor. As you can expect from Calibot, Ruby RB1 is developed to create perfect end results. With its fluidity of three drops, you can literally do a whole range of applications, from moulding to dipped to panning products. Now, you're probably wondering how to work with this chocolate, especially how to temper it. It's not so much different to our dark milk or white chocolates, yet the temperature curve is slightly different. We want to start between 45 and 43 degrees, degrees Celsius. A little bit colder is always better. We want to take it down using the table or by using cullets to about 26 degrees, then up ever so slightly, but we want to end between 28 and a half, 29 degrees. That would be perfect. Easy. So let me show you two ways to temper Ruby RB1. Traditional tabletop tempering, and also tempering in the microwave using cullets. Let's do it. One of the classic ways to temper chocolate is manual table tempering, and it's a perfect way to temper Ruby RB1. Start by melting the chocolate at about 42 degrees Celsius. Then pour out two thirds of the Ruby chocolate onto the marble and keep one third of the melted chocolate in the bowl or melter. Now it's important to keep the chocolate on the marble table in motion. Motion will cool down the chocolate gradually and will create the stable cocoa butter crystals in the Ruby chocolate. You'll see after a few minutes that the chocolate starts to thicken. When the Ruby chocolate slides off the pellet knife, you'll see little mountains appear that slowly disappear into the melted chocolate. That's our sign. Stable crystals are being formed and our chocolate starts to thicken. Now, if we'd continue, more and more crystals would form and the chocolate on the table would thicken too quickly and overcrystallize. So much even that it would be impossible to work with. So what we do then is adding the tempered part again to the remaining warmer chocolate in the melter. We mix it well, simply because we need stable cocoa butter crystals, yet not too much either, just the right amount to work properly with the chocolate. Afterwards, during cooling, these stable crystals will multiply again and crystallize into perfect end result after cooling. Only that will create the beautiful hard and shiny ruby chocolate we've been looking for. Let's check. Ideally, the temperature of the ruby chocolate should be around 29 and a half degrees Celsius to start working with. There we go, 29.4 degrees Celsius, that's perfect. Now, if you wanna be sure the ruby chocolate is tempered correctly, I suggest to apply a quick test. Simply dip the tip of a knife into the chocolate. If it's properly tempered, the chocolate should harden within about five minutes. And look, perfectly hardened and with a satin gloss, that's what we want. So we can now start enrobing or molding with this tempered ruby chocolate. Another chocolate tempering method uses the microwave and is ideal for tempering smaller amounts of ruby chocolate. Now, for microwave tempering, pour ruby RB1 cullets into a melting bowl. Put them in the microwave and melt them at full power for about a minute. Then take them out and give them a good stir to prevent the ruby chocolate from burning. Then repeat this and regularly check. I recommend to keep the intervals shorter and shorter when the chocolate starts to melt, simply because you don't want to burn it. Now stop melting it any further when you see there's some last bits of unmelted chocolate in there. Keep stirring until they've completely melted away. When you measure the temperature, the chocolate should now be around 42 degrees Celsius. Now that's the time to add stable cocoa butter crystals in the shape of cullets. Add about one third of the volume of the melted chocolate. And now simply use the hand mixer to melt every last bit of cullet. I prefer this method for small quantities because it's fast and efficient way of doing an old technique. Now check again the temperature. It should be around 29 and a half degrees. And just to be sure, you can always do the knife test. When the chocolate hardens within a few minutes, you're sure it's perfect to work with. 